SMT Nation, we back in today's video, testing an unfortunate scenario where the fiber at the SMT HQ went down. It wasn't down very long, but it allowed me to kind of come up with this idea to maybe test the Verizon 5G ultra wideband from a hotspot tethering situation, powering multiple devices. So I went ahead and did this, and I wanted to share with you all the results. I connected a 4K TV, uh, tested it under 1080p settings, 480p um, 4K content, and I also connected another device. My iPhone 13 Pro was the one that was creating the connection. The 4K TV and the one that's pictured here in the video, as well as the iPhone 12 Pro, was connected to the hotspot tethering connection. And I tested it on a lot of different levels. All right, so I want to share with you guys not just the speeds that were coming from the iPhone 13 Pro, the on-device data, which you'll see here pictured. I also tested the TV performance, the ability to continue you know, offering contiguous playback without being interrupted or buffering. So I got all that for you in, in this video. All right, 355 down, 12.6 up, and that's on-device data on the iPhone 13 Pro. All right, so this is the main level of the SMT HQ. They, uh, Verizon did a, an upgrade at the local tower that serves my home uh, just a few months ago, and it's been functioning really nicely. Whether it's uh, you know during the day or in the morning or at night, it's been awesome. It's been really good. Here is the phone that it's connected to. So using as a tethering seems to be pretty solid. 349 down, 8 megabits on the up looks and feels and performs just like the on-device data. To me, that's a good indication on two levels. The actual connection uh, between the two phones, the throughput from the tethering phone, and then also iPhone optimizing it and having good cellular modem uh, to really support the task. And you'll see that on the TV being played, it's contiguous. It's not dis, you know disjointed. It's not buffering. We're not really seeing issues. And I'm running the speed test while I'm watching the TV, all right? So we're putting multiple pulls on the same modem on the hotspot, and it's holding up just fine. And, you know, I'm, I'm fast-forwarding for you guys because I know you don't want to sit there and watch, you know, the real-time TV playback. But, uh, you know, it's pretty obvious. You, you know, if it was buffering, you guys would see it. If you want, you could always put that into slow motion and check for yourself. It's 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 really solid. It was a really good performer. I'm actually pleasantly surprised how good it was performing. I there was an iPad that was also connected. I'm not sure how much, you know, pull on the connection it was actually doing. Probably not much. Uh, but there were multiple devices connected, including TV. So this gives me confidence that if something were to happen to your main connection, and you have you know Verizon 5G ultra wideband, Verizon's your provider, and you needed a quick solution to a, an unfortunate problem where your internet was down, could the 5G ultra wideband hold you down? And the answer to that is yes. Now, if you had the Verizon 5G home, it's a totally different story. You got a dedicated QCI. You have a dedicated gateway, you know, with Wi-Fi 6 and all these different features, you know, better antenna hardware, larger antennas, those kind of things with better gain. It's a different scenario. This is just, you know, on the fly, things go down, would you be able to kind of power your way through? All right, here's some fast.com testing for you guys. We're in the 200s, 300-ish range. I'm going to go ahead now and run some nperf testing. I'm going to nperf both devices. Uh, we'll see how it performs. I'm going to actually run them at the same time in this test. Again, I'm, I'm really trying to push the connections as hard as I can. All right, so you got on-device nperf. You got a tethering device nperf. And then you got the 1080p. YouTube TV going on at the same time. And, you know, we're we're pushing it to the limit. I don't know, and I don't know how realistic this is. Maybe you guys think that you could do better. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, this is what I could think of, and these are the tools that I have access to. All right, the on-device, 94% streaming rating, 79% browsing, ninety almost 92% streaming on the tethered device, and a 77% on the browsing. To me, I think that is more than adequate. I think that's fair. That is a solid performance. All right, here's some more video for you uh, as we watch the 1080p YouTube Live. Now we're going to switch things up. I'm going to try a bit of tougher content. This is going to be 4K content. 
I'm going to go over to the Disney Plus app, and I'm going to go ahead and launch one of their newest shows, and we'll see if the 4K video playback will get disrupted. It's obviously a much higher bandwidth demand. Uh, when you go from 1080p to 4K, uh, that's no small leap. That's a huge difference in the capacity needed for the task. Typically, I mean, what does 1080p need? Four, five, maybe six megabits per second. 4K, you're probably going to need somewhere between 20, 25 megabits per second. So you, you know, you're you're going to need at least four, if not five times the throughput. And this connection handled it flawlessly. 324 on the downlink on the on device. Here is the uh, another device that's connected to it, the iPhone 12 Pro. We're over 300 megabits on the downlink. Uh, you will see the video keeps playing. Everything's great on the speed testing. Things look good. My only concern is the uplink in this case, right? You don't have much. That's where things could get a little choppy, right? On device, we got about 7.5 megs on the up. The tether device is getting about 4 or 5 megabits on the up. That's where things get kind of skimpy. So if this was my situation where this had to be like several hours and I needed more uplink, I would have probably have moved the device a little bit higher to try to improve the signal quality to maybe see if I could get a small boost or something, some additional capacity uh, for the uplink. That that might be something that you could consider to try to help. What do you guys what do you guys think here? What do you think of the testing so far? Comment down below so far with what you're seeing. There's a little bit more here in the video that I'm gonna test. All right, so here it is kind of showing the the 4K playback. Looks good. All right, 153 down on the tether device, 210 on the uh, on device. There's kind of like the uplink restriction. That's kind of something I expected. If there was going to be some kind of deficiency, that's it's the uplink side. Now remember, I am about a mile away from the site, and I am on the main floor. So if there are things I wanted to improve, maybe consider getting the phone a little bit higher. And, uh, of course, if I was closer to the tower site, that uplink would probably be a lot faster. Uh, you know, best case scenario, I on the main level, I usually see like 20 30 megabits uplink. Maybe if I was closer to the other side of the house where the tower site faces. So that's that's a possibility that could improve that. Uh, but it, it's performing fine. I don't have any trouble with this connection. I think it's great. I think the given the situation and the circumstances, it performed well. What do you guys think? What do you think of the general performance? What do you think of uh, Verizon's 5G Ultra Wideband? And under these scenarios, I I was happy. I was pleased with it. Comment down below on this video. You are the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard. Like, share, and subscribe for more content like this. Turn on the bell notification icon. Never miss an upload. Links in the description for all that's going on with the community. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.